on the show today, Rabia Hayek. So Rabia is um, a breath worker and he has his own breath work company joining us from um, LA today. Rabia, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mark. Great to be with you. Let's dive into your story. How did you get interested in the body? Let's do it. Fantastic. How, how I ended up getting in, 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 interested in the breath in this particular work uh, was actually through singing originally and my yogic path both diverging and what it was I was uh, I had a degree in voice teaching people how to sing for many years and as my yogic path increased and the breath became very interesting and more and more interesting uh, from a, a, a developing my consciousness perspective I noticed that uh, as I was teaching people breath for singing I would teach them more and more and they began actually having experiences it was a funny moment <laughs> and so so uh, to traverse from there I had a vision uh, to unite the planet and breathing together that came uh, through meditation one night. And upon having a non-ordinary state of consciousness that kind of zung me into this understanding that we could use the internet to unite the planet and breathing together synchronously, uh, books f fell off shelves and different things that I felt I still was refining in my studies of the breath. And uh, over the years, I became a bit of an archeologist of breath. You know, a lot of people will just run into one system learn it, teach it, and continue. Uh, but it really has become a search of what more is there as I continued to find things that were significant to the human and then also carving them into a modality I now teach called Life Force Mastery, which relates breath to how we're living today. How can we best use our breathing to embody, to get body, mind, and spirit moving in one direction? We become very powerful. Okay, so you've, you've gone you're straight into the, the sales pitch almost. Uh, I want to find out a bit more about you as a person, <laughs> if I may. Uh, I know you're in LA, but this is, uh, this is an international audience here. So you grew up in LA, is that right? I'm just trying to get a sense of the geography. No, sure, man. I actually am a Palestinian man, Christian family, uh, okay. born, in, born in what is modern-day Israel. <laughs> and so uh, when I was two, we moved from Israel to the Midwest. I grew up in the Midwest of the United States in St. Louis, Missouri. And then we, um, I moved to Los Angeles, California 20 years ago and have, uh, have cultivated myself out here and enjoyed, uh, enjoyed California for some time. But I must say, uh, being a Palestinian man on the planet and uh, learning the power of us breathing together as humans mm. uh, has been a, a, a really significant piece for me in uh, establishing an understanding of really what is breathing not just for me as a, as a singular person, but what does it mean for us as a race, as a human race, as a group? Uh, here I am, a Palestinian man growing up on this planet, and I realized when I went to ask uh, Israelis to breathe together with me, and we did, there's a power there that you can't, uh, you, it's beyond the mind. It really is. And so that, that's, that's very powerful. That's fun to, to share. I've spent quite a lot of time out in Israel and Palestine, Palestine, and I've got friends who are Christian Arabs. People don't realize that group exists. You know, they feel like all Arabs right. and, Muslims, and there's Christian populations that obviously go back a couple of thousand years there and old villages of people like that. I've met a few of them in my time. And cool, as say, there's, nice. some, there's something by, that, that we call it by communal work in peace building work. There's something about breathing together, moving together, you know, dancing together, breaking bread together that does break down some of those barriers. And it, it, cause it's easy to see things like, okay, I'm a Christian Arab, that's a Muslim Arab, that's a Jew. It's conceptual, right? And then it's like, okay, on the level of the body, it's a little bit different. Yes. Yeah, when, when we start to have these mirror neuron experiences as they're studying in neuroscience, where parts of us are mirroring that which is right in front of us and connecting with, with the connection uh, I should say riding the connection that's already there. And then we get to notice it in our awareness. That's powerful. Uh, but we're only learning uh, now via, you know, uh, uh, some of the studies that are happening, you know, UCLA, uh, Dan Siegel, they're studying the mind and our idea that it isn't even local, that the mind is a non-local phenomena we're tapping into. Well, wow, if that's the case, the story of oneness and, and the technology of oneness through us in our bodies and our beings becomes very interesting. 
uh, to, to seek out and then to experience through something like the breath particularly. And were there particular schools you trained in? You know, was it the rebirth thing or, you know, was there particular sort of angles you came in on it with your training? I actually came through the Pranayama door first. Okay. And so I studied the yogic, for any of you that don't know the word Pranayama, the system of breathing behind yoga uh, first. And what that did for me was it delayed actually my experiences with the rebirthing style and the uh, styles of breath that experience, you experience on your back for an hour and a half more cathartic, uh, very interesting to have it in that in that order uh, because I later met people that had it in the opposite order and we you, it's, but we arrive in a different place of understanding uh, what's the difference you, then people that go one way or the other because as you said there's a few doorways into breath some people are coming in through Wim Hof now you know it's kind of popular you know Dan Brule has got a following we've had him on different that's right. shows and that's right and there's the yoga people who have never heard of that stuff and i've got one friend that does breath work from russian martial arts you know that's yeah. a whole different doorway yeah. right so yeah. it's in Mark, some ways they end up in different places but the different entrance points this is how i like to unpack that is that if we take for a moment a metaphor we think about our breathing like software upon the hardware that is our body our being then when you uh, try on a new set of software, new sets of breathing consciously, you find different results, you find different states. What I particularly got interested in is, wow, uh, when I discovered new software, new software, new software, new ways of breathing, new ways of breathing, I discovered that we could then learn as humans a whole vocabulary of how to state change uh, at will. Mm -hmm. And that became very, uh, useful very powerful and very accessible you know there's people out running around wanting to find how to create balance how do i create balance in my life but if one creates balance in the software that's running the hardware you really discover a different way to start your seeking to create balance and how to to do that and so uh people just to to unpack further the aspects of breathing modalities that are done on your back, where you lay on your back, something to notice. You know, we dream when we're on our back. We enter dream world, we go into other places, and therefore the body and the way that it responds on our back versus when we are upright. Most of our lives spent living it upright. I found a real value to, hey, I really get to understand how my conscious breathing behaves and what it delivers. Uh, by using it sitting up. And so that became uh, an important part of the journey was how, what do I figure out here and what is there laid down as well? And I'll just give you a quick uh, collapsing of this one thought that when we do lay down and you have some of these transcendence sometimes uh, connecting to old emotional stuff that's there to be released, you really have a lot more of that laying down. It taps into it in a different oh. way. Whereas when you do it seated up, you're seeing, you know, uh, Wim Hof uh, uh, performed seated up, you, you, you'll you see that you don't tap into as much of those access points to deep old trauma. Not to say you don't uh, completely, but it's very interesting to watch how the breath behaves differently uh, in using it and approaching it differently. Yeah. yeah, I've been exploring breath work for sort of a few months with some intensity and getting into various, you know, training programs. and working with different teachers and it's just always been a part of martial arts and yoga which i've done for 20 years but just recently i've kind of upped my interest in it and i've realized that the phrase breath work actually it's like well what is the work because for some people it's state changing which is valid and that's empowering right to go well i don't have to be the victim of how i feel right now i can actually make a choice i can you know one one uh, person we had on um, naraj he said you know it's his own internal drug dealer is how he described it you know which i thought was kind of funny <laughs> and uh you know you know able to state change and when other people are using it more therapeutically it's like okay let's work with the unconscious and shadow or trauma or holding in the body you know as Gitten tonkev was on the day you know he was talking about how we release the holding in the body that's it's just sort of emotional traumas and things from the past and other people are looking at it more like transcendently sort of as a spiritual practice and other people are more looking at it as a health practice. There was one woman, Alicia from Poland, and we had her on the show and she was talking about really, you know, working with people with cancer and saying, hey, she just wants to boost immune functioning. She's not trying to get it on high, you know, she's got a different. So it really depends what 
people are trying to achieve with it, right? As to what the work in breath work is. Absolutely. It's a great point. Uh, you know, uh, the word breath work, if you look at where we got into use, utilizing it in the West, uh, in the 70s, you end up getting rebirthing breath work. It's what they actually called Leonard Orr's uh, modality that first stung a lot of people in this direction as far as healers in the West. Then the uh, word rebirthing was misunderstood. So they found themselves dropping it and just going with the word breath work. Well, flash to the future, and you find that the word breath work is very, very uh, oriented with root words like work on your breath, <laughs> breath work. And so there's been this interesting evolution of the use of the word, I can tell you, from having been working on the actual dictionary definition. Uh, right, right. I, 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 I gathered a few people in our field and I said, hey, if, you know, you type in breathwork and breathworker in Microsoft Word, you get the red underline because it's not in our dictionary. That's interesting. And, yeah, and so we created a, uh, a definition of both words, and we've gone out to the reference books in attempt to see for them to accept it, and it's in their file folders for once we hit that tipping point that humanity is using the actual word. But notice, due to the COVID times that we're in, the, the evolution of our awareness about our breathing has immediately taken front seat. And now we're like, Mm -hmm. Okay, breath. What do I do with it? And the discoveries you mentioned right then, Mark, of uh, hey, do I use it for a therapeutic quality? Am I using it for state change? Am I using it for meditation and deepening? Those are all softwares available. It's like saying, hey, I'm in a software store. What should I pick up? Should I pick up the word processor? Should I pick up the music uh, program? And the beauty is this: when, as humans, we discover that you shouldn't expect. The, mic, the, the, the word processing program to do something that you're expecting uh, the music creation program to do. We get to understand that if we want to embody uh, aspects of the human and be able to really you know, sit in calmness and peace, then uh, here comes a moment I wanna energize and go out and use a upliftment of energy that we don't just breathe in one way to do that. And that's the old way of thinking is, oh, I just, I breathe. There used to be a joke 10 years ago, I'm teaching this work as a breath work. I explain it, somebody will go, oh, aren't I already breathing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like that, that the impression. Um, it is a fun <laughs> thing is I had a yoga teacher on the show yesterday and we were just saying, you know, we're laughing and we get told, we get paid to tell people to breathe, you know, like you can't do it, but then there's, it's funny that there's an arrogance around it because it's so close to home. That it's like, well, yes. I've been that since I was a kid, you know, like, like, it, I mean, there's arrogance around most things. Like most guys think they're good at driving and most guys think they're good in bed and most guys think they're good at marketing. And it's like, and breath's even closer than any of those key life skills of, you know, sales or marketing or shagging or whatever. So it's, it is an arrogance that comes from it being so close, I think. And, and it's taken for granted. Like I always used to, I discovered this in jujitsu, you know, that breath is taken for granted until someone takes it away. Oh yeah, you, you, you nailed that one. You, you nailed it. that one because that, that's the key element right there is you realize how important it is yeah. the moment it's challenged. And anybody that's been through any respiratory infection, respiratory issue, even bronchitis, will tell you, wow, I, I really had to focus and therefore I get how important it is. But man, you mentioned something that uh, it's how close it is to yeah. us. Yeah. That, you know, uh, you said arrogance, but I discovered something over time. What seems to be arrogance is actually protection. And okay. what I mean by that is people are seeking to protect what they already know, right? That's safe. Right, right, I know. Right. And so the moment I am inviting, especially amongst peers or amongst a group of people, the ability to access that close and personal place oh, wait a minute, you're not going to go to that person's place. It's intimate, because it's, it's like stuff's there. They know there's emotion on some level. You know, I think it's two things, isn't it? It's one, saying we don't know something. Guys, I think there's a definite gender difference here. Guys are way worse than this than women. And some cultures have this going on as well. But to say I don't know something is like a loss of status for a lot of us guys. You know, it's like I don't want to ask directions. To say sure. you don't know your own breath, that's like admitting you're a fucking idiot. You know? Interesting piece. And right. On top of that, sure. we've got this piece around it's intimate. So when you when you ask when you're inviting someone to the breath, that's kind of an intimate move in a way, right? It really is. It's that piece of like, wait a minute, did I ask to get intimate? 
<laughs> wait a minute, what, should I really enter this place of personal space right now and in front of all these people? Uh, for some people, they've never even been invited to do so at all. So to do it in front of other people or with other people is actually a challenge. So it's really beautiful that we're pointing this out, this idea of how personal it is. And I must say, that's one of the reasons it has so much access is that because it's so personal, because it's so riding to the center of your being in every breath, every moment while we're alive, that access becomes a highway. And if you learn to use it, and by the way, I'm not a person that's like, well, you gotta come try this particular modality. My belief in breath work and how it's showing up is that we're seeing the rise of the archetype breath worker. People that work with breath in all sorts of areas, all areas, and any particular breath work you are attracted to, for whatever reason, is probably there for you to tap into that personal highway. It's okay.